Hello everyone, Gareth Master 974 back again today doing another Valve source code tutorial and in this video I'm going to outline how to add the slam from Half-Life 2 Deathmatch into a Source 2013 single player mod. Now for a Source 2013 multiplayer mod the slam works pretty much immediately out of the box. So if you're doing a multiplayer mod then you don't have to follow the tutorial but there is an issue where slams can basically levitate when the object they're attached to moves and that's obviously a bug. So I'm going to outline how to fix that. But from a single player perspective, I find that the easiest way to get the slam into the single player code is to copy and paste the files grenade trip mine and grenade satchel. So there's grenade trip mine.h and grenade trip mine.cpp and the same thing for grenade satchel and copy them from your source code game server hl2mp directory and paste them into your source code game server hl2 directory and overwrite the files and also copy and paste the weapon underscore slam files from your source code directory game shared hl2mp directory and paste them into your SRC game server HL2 directory. But by doing this, there's going to be Half-Life 2 multiplayer specific dependencies. So for example, you can load up grenade satchel.h and near the top it should say something like hashtag include HL2MP forward slash weapon slam.h. And you just want to get rid of the HL2MP at the start of it, so it's just weapon slam.h. And if you really want to, you can go into grenade satchel.cpp and grenade trip mine.cpp and replace the m underscore fl damage line with something like if get owner entity and get owner entity arrow is player then m underscore fl damage is sk player damage satchel.get float else m underscore fl damage equals sk npc damage satchel dot get float so that's in grenade satchel and then you pretty much have the same thing in grenade trip mine except replace satchel with trip mine that way you utilize both the player damage and npc damage convars and if you do that then you have to realize that it's going to be calling upon convars which are usually defined in skill.cfg so there's actually these lines in skill.cfg. So for example, SK player damage satchel. So you can just uncomment those lines. And for the sake of consistency, I make the satchel and trip mine player damage, NPC damage and radius exactly the same because I don't see any reason why a satchel charge detonation should be any more powerful or less powerful than a trip mine, for example. So once you've done with that, you want to go to weapon slam.h and change where it says weapon underscore hl2 mp blah -de blah -de blah and just replace it with base hl combat weapon.h and instead of c base hl2 mp combat weapon, you want to change it to c base hl combat weapon. Now in the video, I change it to a c base combat weapon. I don't think there's too much of a difference between the two, but just stick with C base HL combat weapon, that's what you're supposed to do. And then in weapon slam.cpp, there's going to be some errors that we're going to need to fix up. So instead of HL2MP player.h, you just want to change it to player.h. And HL2MP weapon slam is just weapon slam. And you want to remove the network table and begin prediction data stuff. And you want to add in implement server class st. And then in brackets, C weapon underscore slam, and then DT weapon slam, and then immediately afterwards, end send table. And I don't think you need to do this, but I moved the link entity to class stuff until after this server class definition, but above the actable section, as you'll probably see in the video. And there's two instances where we have a CHL2MP player definition for P owner. So we're just going to replace both of these with a C base combat character called asterisk P owner and that's equal to two base player and then in brackets get owner. So at this point it's going to use a custom ammo type. 
So to add in custom ammo types, you want to go to hr2gamerules.cpp. And right at the bottom of the file, there's a whole load of ammo definitions. And so pretty much copying over from HL2 multiplayer, or Half-Life 2 multiplayer, I should say, or Source 2013 multiplayer, you want to do def dot add ammo type and then slam damage burn tracer non. And I've done 150 and 75 for the player damage and NPC damage. You don't need to do that. It could be zero zero. But that can lean itself into a follow up tutorial where I talk about how you can make stuff like the slam or frag grenades or SMG1 grenades explode when they receive damage. So that would be useful in that context. But if you don't want to do that, then you can do zero zero five for the maximum amount of slams you can have and then zero zero. Or if you don't want to put a hard number of five in there, then you can do something like SK max slam. And then right near the top, there's a whole bunch of convars and just copy one of those, but make it SK max slam. And then in, for example, skill.cfg, you just define a number in there. You can also save yourself a lot of hassle if you go to player.cpp and under the section cheat impulse commands and case 101, which is impulse 101. You can do give ammo and then in brackets five and then slam. And then later down, just do give named item weapon underscore slam. That way, if the player uses impulse 101, then they get maximum amount of slams and the weapon slam so they can use it. And so at this point, we have the code all done and that works. And there's going to be a couple of issues as well with think functions if you do build right now. And it tells you exactly what you need to do to solve that. So I'm going to not even comment on it. Yeah, at this point, we're going to need the assets from Source 2013 multiplayer. So I'm going to use GCF scape, load up the HL2MP pack and extract the weapon slam.txt file. And that's going into your mods script folder. Then I'm going to copy the or extract rather the sound weapons slam folder and that goes into your mods sound weapons folder and then under models weapons i'm going to extract everything with v underscore slam and w underscore slam so that's the view model for the slam and the world model for the slam and that goes into your mods models weapons folder and then the same for materials models weapons and v underscore slam and w underscore slam so once you have all of that, you should have everything working for the slam to be usable in a single player mod. So as I mentioned earlier, even in multiplayer, there's a bug with the trip mine where it can stay levitating in the air if the attached object or rather the object that the trip mine is attached to moves. And I don't know who to give credit for this, but I found it online and I'm just going to outline it here. So in grenade trip mine H, you want to add in void attach to entity and then in brackets const C base entity asterisk const int. I don't think the second const is necessary. So you can just say const C base entity asterisk int. And then in the private section, you want to do a const C base entity asterisk called M underscore P attached object. Create a vector called vector m underscore vec old pos attached object and a q angle called m underscore vec old ang attached object. And so, what we're going to do with this in grenade trip mine.cpp, right at the end of the beam break think function, but above the set next think line, you're going to add if m underscore p attached object and in brackets exclamation mark vectors are equal. And then in more brackets, m underscore vec old pos attached objects, mp attached object arrow get abs origin and 1.0f. And then two vertical lines to mean or exclamation mark q angles are equal. And then in brackets, m underscore vec old ang attached object, m underscore p attached object arrow get abs angles and 1.0f. So what this is saying is if the trip mine is attached to an object, so M underscore P attached object is going to be a valid entity. And then if the vectors aren't equal between the attached object absolute origin and the old position attached object vector specifically for the trip mine, or if the angles change, then we're going to detonate. 
And so to detonate, we do m underscore i health equals zero, event killed of c take damage info, and then a c base entity asterisk in brackets of m underscore h owner, then this 100 and jib normal, and then return. And so the only thing to do now is to create the attached to entity function. So you do void c trip mine grenade colon colon attached to entity of const c base entity asterisk int and we're going to say assert m underscore p attached object equals equals null so if for whatever reason m underscore p attached object is equal to something then it's going to throw up a crash and you get an assertion failure at that point but um you want to do m underscore p attached object equals int then m underscore vec old pos attached object equals int arrow get abs origin and m underscore vec old ang attached object equals int arrow get abs angles. And so the only thing to do now is go to weapon slam dot cpp and in trip mine attach, you want to add a line about the section where I show you and do p mine arrow attach to entity p entity. And so that should, in theory, fix instances where the trip mine floats in the air. And I'm going to show some footage throughout the video as well of both the multiplayer mods and the single player mods and just show you that this in fact works. So you can throw the grenade as a satchel and remotely detonate it, deploy a trip mine. And if the trip mine is on a physics object, then if the physics object moves, then the trip mine is going to detonate. So that's pretty much the tutorial, everyone. I hope you found it helpful. And uh, I'll see you next time for whatever I decide to do next, I guess. So let me know what you think in the comment section but down below. Sorry for the fuck-ups, I know. And um, take care. Peace out. See you next time.